Hi everybody and welcome back to Kepri Gaming with me Matt and in this video I'm going to show you how you can win if you're bad at Fortnite. Now it might seem quite a misleading title, it might seem quite a strange one because if you're bad at Fortnite then obviously you can't win but actually anybody can win at Fortnite. You do need to have some practice in shooting and aiming but anybody can win. And in the past two days, I've had 10 wins, 27 in total for season four. And what you're looking at now are six wins that I had in one day. I had eight games, I came second twice, and I had six wins. So these are the highlights. I've not just relied on Doctor Doom's mythic weapons. Sometimes I have got a mythic weapon, but it's not always important, as you can see here. But the advice in this video probably goes against everything you know. People will say land at Doom's domain, go after the mythic weapons, but what I'm saying is the opposite. Don't do any of that. If you're a great player and you can build really fast and you've got loads of experience, then this video is probably not for you. But if you're somebody that wants to get their first win or somebody that can't compete with the amazing builders, the pro players, then hopefully the advice in this video can help you. So what I did when compiling my list of advice is that I followed it every single time in one day and got six wins and two second places. So if you're a noob or somebody that just can't win, they can't compete with the pro players, this is my advice. So number one, don't land in the populated places. Don't go to Doom's Domain, the cities, the towns. Land somewhere that's quite secluded, somewhere that nobody ever goes. Everyone always looks for a landmark to land in. But what I found, if you land on the outskirts, on the outside of the island, every building's got at least one decent weapon. What I do, I land on the outside, I explore the area, and then move into the circle. I'm just showing you on screen some places I have landed, and for example the beach is a great place to land. And the reason for that is fishing, and that leads me to my second key point. In season 3, nobody went fishing, it was quite a pointless exercise. But this time, fishing is the best thing you can do. Not only are the fish amazing, the hopper fish is incredible, there's the thermal fish to see through buildings, but the actual weapons you can get from fishing are the best. You can get purple assault rifles, you can get purple charged shotguns, you can get blue assault rifles, you can get a sniper rifle almost every time. All you've got to do is find a fishing rod and find the fishing spots. Fishing in the open sea or rivers will bring rubbish like tin cans, sometimes some ammo, some grey weapons, but look for the fishing spots, the circles where you see the fish, and you'll always get decent weapons. And what I'm showing you now is some examples. And here's another example. A great place to land is by the cooling towers at Steamy Stacks. There's fishing rods around this building. As you move around, get a boat maybe, find the fishing spots. And as you can see, I've got a slurp jellyfish. They're pretty useful. But look at that, a blue assault rifle. Again, you get some really decent weapons, some really good weapons. The floppers are great as well, give you plenty of health. You get shield fish as well. So everyone's running around looking for medikits, bandages. But actually, the fish do a much better job. Eating them's quick when you're on the go. And as you can see now, I've got a blue assault rifle, a blue burst assault rifle, two shield fish, and a blue jellyfish. Again, it's just worth spending plenty of time fishing before a game. Now I'll show you this example as well. Again, I'm landing at the same location. It's a really good location to go fishing. You can walk around the island. There's plenty of fishing spots. There's always a fishing rod here. And look, the first thing I've got is a purple burst assault rifle, a weapon that you can basically win the game with. Obviously what most people do is go straight into a city, a town, pick up some sort of green weapon, sometimes grey weapons, try and survive, you always lose some health, lose some shield. Well actually what you're trying to do is be prepared. And look at that, a purple sniper rifle. Now I've got a flopper fish, a purple burst assault rifle, a purple sniper rifle, and I've only just started fishing. There's so many fishing spots around. So the first key point was to land at a secluded location, the second one is go fishing. If you're a player that needs that extra help, getting prepared right at the start really does help. Getting the best weapons, the most health, the most shield, you can simply go fishing. Nobody's ever around, 
You can do it undisturbed. You can get blue and purple weapons almost every single time. If you find a pro fishing rod if you're lucky, then you can use that to get even better stuff. I'm just showing you this as an example of what you can actually get. I mean, look at that. Now, the hop flopper fish is the best. The hop flopper is amazing. Honestly, it's like a mythic weapon in itself. If you get through to the final two, eating that fish can give you the win. And now I'll show you just how effective it is. I'm in the final two. I've got a hop flopper. And no, I don't win this, but just look how difficult I make it for him. Look at the jumps. Look how big the jumps are. Sadly, in this clip, I actually run out of bullets, so there's no hope for me. They had Doctor Doom's mythic weapons. But every jump that I did was huge. It's almost impossible to aim at. Now, my third piece of advice is use a player that blends into the landscape. For example, I'm using She-Hulk. She's got green skin. The purple outfit also kind of blends in with roads and rocks. From afar, she's quite hard to see. I mean, obviously you can see any player, but some players like the Silver Surfer will always stand out. Thor will also stand out. He's got this shiny cloak. Sometimes he's got shiny hair. So what you want is somebody that can blend in with the landscape. My fourth tip is when you start, always look out for a slurp truck. If I am going for Doom's Domain right at the start, I always land here. All you've got to do is land next to the slurp truck, go into the truck, reverse, and you get covered in slurp, and you get 100% shield. Now you've got the best possible start to a game. All you've got to do now is look for weapons. There's also a slurp truck right next to Steamy Stacks, as shown here. So a good place to land is next to this truck, reverse, get covered in shield, and then go fishing. But even when you're playing the game when you're running around, look for the slurp trucks and destroy them. It gives you that 100% health and 100% shield. The next thing is use helicopters strategically. If you've not got good weapons, the helicopter is a weapon in itself. It can also get you from A to B really quickly. If you're on the edge of a storm circle and need to get somewhere, if you see a helicopter, jump in. I would recommend landing on the outside of the circle to stay undetected because the only problem with a helicopter is everyone can see you and hear you. You can't really move with stealth. In this example, I'm going towards Doom's Domain. When I get there, I can see another helicopter's taking off and although I don't recommend this if you're a new player, I try to hunt them down and get the mythic weapons. As you can see, my actual weapons are pretty awful. There's no way I could compete with Doctor Doom's gauntlets. But with the helicopter, even if it explodes, you won't die. Look at that, I lost my shield. But what I also did was kill the person with the mythic weapons. All of a sudden, I've got all of his loot. Both mythic weapons if I want them. And now my game is so much better. So, use a helicopter strategically. My next advice is quite a strange one. Again, if you're not a confident player, if you're not very good at close combat, if you can't build very well, then as the circle closes in, always stay on the outside. Players always look into the circle, looking for someone to get. People don't look the other way. So if you are on the outside of the circle, chances are you'll survive all the way to the end. As you can see here, I'm doing just that. I'm walking all the way around the edge of the circle. Nobody can see me. There's loads of trees to hide behind as well. And what you can do is look inward and try and find people. And there you can see I can see someone. I decided not to go after them. I decided not to shoot them. I didn't want to bring any attention to myself. The whole plan for me was to get right to the end. And although I have had games where I've had 10, 11, 12 kills, some games I can get 1 or 2 kills only and still win. And I can do that by following the advice in this video. And here's another example doing the same again. You can see the map in the top right hand corner. I'm just circling the outside of the circle. Instead of walking directly into the new storm circle, Go around the edges and get into it that way. 
that's the best way to be undetected. And every clip in this video has ended with me winning the game. So if you're not a very good player the advice does work. My next piece of advice is about Doom's Domain. Ok we all want mythic weapons, we all want some fun, we all want excitement, but I would advise going into Doom's Domain later. Don't go in right at the start, there's so many players there, everyone's competing, everyone's fighting, and 9 times out of 10 you will probably die. So pick up the weapons that people have left, there's always decent things hanging around, As you can see now I'm fully prepared, there's 42 people left in the game, the storm circle's closing so that Doom's Domain's going to be outside, and now I think it's a good time to go down underneath the football pitch. And as you can see somebody's there, I've got the high ground, I can try and take them out, chances are they've got the mythic weapons, and it's easier to kill a player halfway through the game than it is Doctor Doom right at the start with a green shotgun. There's no point even trying. So I went into Doom's domain much later, a few shots, took the mythic weapon, got the helicopter and got out. And again I've gone into Doom's Domain much later, there's not many people left in the game, I got the disguise on and if you go down here there's a henchman's chest and there's loads of good weapons inside. Again it is a good thing to explore later in the game. Not many people actually go in here and open this chest. So I've got some shield, I've got some decent weapons, blue and purple, and there's no one around to take me out. Everybody's already been here, most people have left or died, and now I can go down under the football pitch and go into the vault. And look, there's a mythic weapon just been left there, there's loads of good weapons around, I can take what I want totally undisturbed and get out. And that's exactly what I did. Again I was well prepared and well equipped to carry on with the game. My next piece of advice is you know what, you don't really need the mythic weapons. Don't play the game just to try and get them. Don't worry about the planes that come down with the robots around them. Don't worry about Doctor Doom and his mythic weapons. For a new player in the game the best thing you can do is to get two long range weapons and one assault rifle. For me that's the best setup to win. It's best to fire at range. If you've got good long range weapons you can always get some kills. Sometimes they get the win. And if you've also got an assault rifle, they're good at short distance and long, so that gives you a good chance to get a win. And as you can see here I'm showing you my wins again. Of course mythic weapons do help, if you see one lying around do pick them up, if you kill someone that drops them pick them up. The surfboard for example, the one that flies that's incredible, this ball that rolls along the ground can restore your health. And obviously Doctor Doom's gauntlets are very powerful, and they can give you a jump boost, but I would say go for two long range weapons and one short range. And here you can see exactly what I mean, one sniper shot, one kill. Another sniper shot, another kill. An assault rifle, another kill. Again I'm not bothered about the mythic weapons, just forget about them, play the game like you would season 3. And now we're down to the final 3, I've got a sniper rifle in hand, I took that person out with a 200 meter ludicrous shot and now there's just me and one person left. 
And that brings me to the next piece of advice. Don't build unless you have to. If you're not very good at building, if you're slow, don't bother. Trees, rocks and buildings give you plenty of cover. If you build, you draw attention to yourself. For example, that player was building that big construction, I could see exactly where he was. And if I've got my long range weapons, I can take him out. When you're building very slow, everyone can see you and it doesn't help you, so don't bother. The next piece of advice is to be tactical. Here I'm trying to shoot somebody. I'm missing every time, my aiming's really bad. And instead of keep going, keep going, keep trying to get them and chasing them down, you know what, let that one go. Don't try and get every single person every time. You don't need to. Sometimes you've got to choose. Do you want a high kill count or do you want to win? For me, I prefer to get the win. Nothing worse than getting a high kill count and coming third. I'd rather get a low kill count and come first. So what I've done now, I'm not chasing him down. I'm just hanging back, waiting for the circle to close. I'm using stealth tactics, I'm hiding under the lorry. And then I'll wait for the storm to close and from there I can go in. Now the storm's closed, we're going that way. So I'm going to go back with my sniper rifle. See who's around and start again. And yeah, there's fighting down there. Again, I'm not getting involved. I'm being tactical. And the final piece of advice is don't rush. Just take your time. Play a stealth game. You don't need to rush around looking for people to kill. Because in this example here, I got one kill and a win. In this game, I avoided all conflict, followed the advice. And look, one shot, one kill. I did do some shooting through the game. I didn't get my enemies, but I didn't fight them. I just carried on. And that's because I was being tactical. I didn't rush. I took my time. I avoided certain conflicts. I managed to get through to the final two and I got the win. So I hope you found this video useful. Follow the tips in this video and you might just get your first win in Fortnite Season 4. Even the bad players can get a win. And I'm the perfect example. I'm not the greatest player, but in just over a week I've had 27 wins in Season 4. And I'm sure you can as well. Thank you for watching this video from Kepri Gaming. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and more videos are coming soon.